Pomelo. This is a pomelo. Uh, it's a citrus fruit that I've never eaten before. I have a vague sense that it's kind of like a grapefruit, but with a much milder flavor. I believe this is one of the like original citrus fruits. Um, all of the ones that we commonly eat today, uh, no oranges, navel oranges, blood oranges, uh, lemons, limes, etc., were all hybrids of uh, older citrus fruit that actually grew naturally, and I believe the pomelo is one of them. We might do a bit of research into that after we feast. Um, I bought this recently, even though I'm extremely busy preparing for San Francisco and doing lots of other stuff, because I am a fool. Um, and I certainly have to eat it before I go away for a week, so we're gonna we're gonna plunge into it now. Um, this is, I believe, a sweet red Chinese pomelo that I bought at the local Asian supermarket. It smells good. Um, I I don't have any tools. <laughs> I I don't know if it's at all feasible. Okay, we're we're making some progress. So I'm digging into it now. Really fragrant smell coming off of it. This is a, a fruit I've been aware of, you know, for quite a long time. But I, I don't know, I just uh, never had an opportunity to try it. But I have a friend who's like a big enthusiast of them, who told me recently about how good the pomelo was that he bought. I was like, yeah, it's time. I need to know. Look at the inside of the rind. It's so bready. It has the, the exact texture of bread. It's kind of surreal. The same sort of flakiness the same kind of doughy thickness. Look at that. If I saw that, there's no way I don't think that that's just a chunk of uh, a white bread. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of this white stuff. I have a bowl here that I'm dumping it into. I'm not just <laughs> dumping it onto my desk, in case you're wondering. Uh, wow, near the, the tip here, it's, it's just pure thick white stuff. So this is certainly something that was bred out of citrus fruits. This level of, uh, I don't know what this white stuff is called. The rind is the outermost layer, I'm pretty sure. So this interior stuff, I don't know. I don't know if there's a specific name for it. We can see a bit of the fruit itself actually emerging here. Very exciting. Um, yeah, I talked to one friend about it. She said that it's kind of like a grapefruit, but a little milder, and that the big delight of it is that you know the little nodules in citrus fruit, the, the kind of atomic layer of citrus fruit um, <clears throat> that make up the, the substantial pieces, that those are very big and very juicy in pomelo. So I'm all about that. Um, she said that Sometimes they get dried out and they're nowhere near as good. So hopefully this will be a nice juicy one. I had no idea how to select it. I had no idea if I should be looking for something firm or something soft or what sort of color I should look for. Just ripping the top of it off, off of it. Um, it's it's kind of weird just how bready the inside of this is. I didn't think it would be like this at all. Look at look at that. It's so bready. This it's it's like every signal I have in my body is telling me that this is also food. This pulp stuff. But there's no way this is at all tasty, right? Yeah, no. I don't think that's for eating. Maybe there's some culinary way to go about it, but I lack the resources and technology to uh, to pull that one off right now. So now we've got all the rind off, and it's just this big, fluffy ball of fruit. Got almost all the rind off. I, <laughs> I don't really know where to go from here. You can see at the very bottom there's a little hole that if I... I, I assume I'll be able to use this to, to pry it apart. Ooh! Yeesh! What a sound! So now we've got our pomelo in two halves. It's a lot more manageable. The inside looks a lot like grapefruit. 
Um, you can see what I'm talking about, those little nodules, right, of, uh, of fruity, juicy goodness. Uh, the skin is kind of tough on even like the, the membrane type part. Normally this is like really insubstantial on citrus fruits. Um, so I almost want to peel this away as well. <clears throat> I feel like that would be better. Um, but yeah, we're getting kind of close to being able to take a bite of this after five thrilling minutes of wrestling with rind and pulp and stuff. Well, not pulp. This, this is the pulp. <clears throat> the pulp I would describe, I guess, as the outside of the nodules that hold the actual substantial juice of the fruit. So, um, I'll try. I got a little chunk here. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, that's nice. Hmm. Definitely is a more mild grapefruit. Very, very apt description of the flavor. It still has the bitterness of the grapefruit. And it's not so much that that's counteracted by this being additionally sweet. It's more just that that bitterness is uh, less <clears throat> substantial than it is in grapefruit. So it's just sort of less flavorful overall. As someone who's not like a huge fan of grapefruit, I don't know how into this I am. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is kind of cool though. It's I've never had a citrus fruit like this where the, these little nodules are so substantial in themselves. I mean, just eat them one at a time. A little juice explosion in my mouth. That's pretty cool. Mm. I have a small cut on my lip. I don't know from where, but it is uh, <laughs> uh, reacting to this a little painfully. Hmm. It's huge. <laughs> There's like so much of it to eat. I don't know. I, I like it about as much as grapefruit, I guess I'd say. But grapefruit I have a hard time eating a lot of at once, just because of the bitterness and the sourness um, kind of overbears me after a little bit. Uh, but this, it's like mild enough that I think I could potentially eat this whole thing. Um, maybe we'll try to research some things to eat it with, maybe some other ways to prepare it. Probably just sprinkling a bit of sugar on top of it, as a lot of people do with grapefruit, would make it kind of activate some of the sweetness in the flavor. <clears throat> so I could do that. It's so tough though, like, th this is so strange for a citrus fruit. The, the, the innermost layer, like the actual nodules themselves, are this firm. So even adding the sugar, it's not going to like seep into it the way a lot of other citrus fruits it would. Hmm. So this is a pomelo. Okay, let's do a little bit of research while I continue to snack away at this. Oh, that was kind of dumb. I have like all the, the little white flakes just went everywhere. <laughs> I have one of the little nodule things. Okay, first we'll do our farming. You can see the farm is coming along quite nicely. I think right before I leave for San Francisco, I'll make a an update video for this and set it up to do something while I'm away. I could even stream it doing something while I'm away. That might be fun. I don't know. Uh, just good use of my unlimited internet. Got to get my money's worth. So if I'm gone for a week, got to make it do something. So yeah, we're, we're full carrots right now, and that's because I'm thieving with lots of glove backup so that I have 100% success rate on the farmer, and that just constantly gives you seeds and fertilizer 
I believe it's the best way. And you can tell I, I've mastered carrots. Once you're past 50, you don't need fertilizer. So that's nice too. I only need fertilizer for my trees now. <clears throat> but yeah, we've been full carrot, full magic seed for quite a while. And the results are speaking for themselves. So yeah, what's up with the pomelo? Citrus maxima or citrus grandis? The maximum citrus or the big citrus? Nice. Uh, one of the original citrus species from which the rest of cultivated citrus have been hybridized. Amazing. So the ancestral species are mandarins. Wow. Mandarins are OG. Really? That kind of surprises me. The pomelo. This is like an even less domesticated pomelo. Like you, you, you can see just the difference in ratio beside between the rind, the gunk stuff, and the flesh. That this pomelo has been cultivated for quite some time to be like it is. Citrons. This is the one that turned into lemons. Yeah, it's so bumpy and stuff. The fingered citron. Yeah, so the the rinds in general are just way, way, way more thick. And it's like, when you look at this, doesn't it look a little more like something, like an actual plant? <laughs> I don't know if I can describe this too well. But but it's like, I don't know. You, you kind of, you think of the most basic plants you can imagine. You think of the most basic, like, seeds and stuff. You can kind of build your way up to something like this a little more easily, I think, than, than an orange as we know it. Uh, anyways, um, so the grapefruit is the sweet orange mixed with the pomelo. Hmm. And the mandelo is a low citrus, or a low acid. Okay. Oh my gosh. Oh, that'll haunt me. So let's learn a little more about pomelos. Hmm. Big citrus. Yes, yes. Citrus Maximus sounds like it's like a pun. Or like, isn't there like a Circus Maximus or something? Circ, Circ du Mac, I don't know. The juice is regarded as delicious. A sweet kind with white flesh and a sour kind with pinkish flesh. Mmm. So we got the sour kind. Even though I'm pretty sure in the story it was advertised as sweet red pomelo. Hold on, I think I still have the bag. called um, a red honey pomelo. You can't see that very well. But yeah, it's called a red honey pomelo. But I guess there's an even a sweeter pomelo. Maybe I would, I'd probably like that better. Hmm. Spongy pith of the rind is discarded. Okay. Slice pre-soaked pith to absorb the sauce and fat for eating. Ooh. Yeah, that makes sense. It's so bready. And I think if it was saturated with sauce so that it doesn't have that, like, impossible to chew texture, <laughs> and it actually kind of broke down a bit, I can see why this is, like, very appealing. It has a very, very appealing texture, um, even though it doesn't translate into its actual eatability. I'm often eaten raw and sprinkled with or dipped in a salt mixture. Even salads. Oh, that would be good. I think this and, like... A salad with balsamic vinegar and stuff. Ooh, juice is mixed with pineapple. That, that could be really good, too. Um, unfortunately, I don't have many things to try eating this with. Oh, some medicines may interact. I've heard about this with the grapefruit, that if you're taking, like, blood pressure medication, you shouldn't eat grapefruit. Luckily, I don't eat anything. I don't, I don't take anything like that. <laughs> so I should be fine. Oh, these are used for aromatic baths. Cool. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Um, what can we try eating this with? It's like a salad, citrus bar. Um, 
Yeah, that's nice. It's nice coloring, too. It almost looks like salmon or something in there. But yeah, something salty and savory to offset this might be nice. I'm curious about the salt mix that they dip it in in somewhere. Southeast Asia. Uh, pomelo cake. Salmon tart tar with Chinese grapefruit. But yeah, because I'm going to California for a week, my kitchen is pretty low on stock. I don't want to buy anything that's going to expire. Except I bought the pomelo! <laughs> Thanks, pomelo. <laughs> Um, so any of this I can make. Pepperoni bread with crescent, what? Skip. This, this, what, where, what? Wait, what, what did I just do? This isn't a pomelo recipe. This is just telling me to search something else. That seems weird. I got a little confused. Ooh, I like sago. The, ah, to have the little individual nodules. Nice, nice. My dad actually bought some mango pudding at the same time that I bought this. I should have bought some too, and I could have made mango pudding and put the pomelo in it, and that probably would have been amazing. Um, oh, lime curd. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Lacking many ingredients for all of these. Let's try... First, a little bit of pomelo, pomelo contrast. So we're getting a bag of cheese. trying to take a knife out of the box that spilled out of the box at a timing that uh, caught me off guard a little. But we're all good. Okay, so I'm not going to eat these at the same time. I think that's a little much. But I think, you know, you take a bite of some cheese. Mouth is... This one is too... This is too intense to start off with. Uh, let's start off with this one. This one is nice. <clears throat> so I'm like, I'm going to take a bite of cheese. It's going to feel creamy, buttery, sharp. Fill my mouth with this, this kind of thick, thick taste all over my mouth. And then contrast that with the bitter, acidic, juicy pomelo. Okay, does that make sense? Eat some cheese. Got my pomelo ready. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm into that. I'm into that. I like contrasting food. I like juxtaposing things. It makes it feel less bitter because you've already kind of accustomed yourself to the sharpness of the cheese. So when you taste the bitter part of the pomelo, it's like less blah and it's more it more just kind of takes its rightful place and you can appreciate maybe the the sweetness of the pomelo a little more oh, yeah i think this is pretty good they never really hear about cheese and citrus this sounds quite gross, <laughs> but <clears throat> a sort of back-to-back -back thing I think is reasonable and quite tasty. So yeah, that's good. A little bit of the French fortified cheese, perhaps. Let's 
This one is nice and I think I think the term I would use is dry. That's more of like a wine term, but I think it applies here. Oh my gosh! Uh, I'm not gonna eat that. Yeah, yeah. Mm, yeah, I think I'm a genius. It's good. Cheese and pomelo. It's like melon and prosciutto. You know? That's like a good thing. You have the prosciutto around the melon. Mm. Fantastic. They talk about it in one piece. Way, way back in the Arlong Park Arc. During the big party celebration, because spoilers, the good guys win. Um, Luffy's eating prosciutto and melon. Holy, there's a lot of pomelo here. I don't know if I can eat all of this. This is like, you know, you buy it and you're like, yeah, it's huge. But <laughs> it's so huge. Like, it's actually just <laughs> it's so much more commitment than, than any other fruit purchase. Even like a watermelon. Like a watermelon is bigger. It contains more stuff to eat, but it's so insubstantial. This is fairly insubstantial, too, probably calorically. But uh, um, it's more flavorfully intense, and I don't think I can really eat anywhere near as much of it as I could watermelon. And I got some blue cheese, all hundreds, and a ranch. Mm. Oh man, every time. <laughs> every time. <laughs> Mm, lovely. Okay. And then Pamela. Mmm. Ooh. Ooh. Go. <laughs> Maybe we're going a bit too far now. <laughs> Maybe we're going a bit too far with this one. There is like... Because the blue cheese, it's not really a, a, a sharp taste anymore. It's more just like a funky taste, I guess I would say. Um, it, it didn't really... Uh, have this sort of balancing effect with the pomelo the way that the other cheeses have. It more just made me think I was eating moldy pomelo. Which is why I'm eating it now, because I don't want moldy pomelo. <laughs> mm. Damn, that is a nice good blue cheese. I gotta ask next time exactly what that was, because they gave me it in the, the unmarked package. And we'll have a little bit of pomelo. See if it makes a good palate cleanser too. I think I'm getting more accustomed to the taste, but <clears throat> it has the the acidity, you know, that just makes me think I can't eat all that much of it at once. I don't know if my friend, when he was talking about the pomelo he bought and how happy he was with it actually eats all of it in one sitting. Seems crazy to me, but maybe I'm the crazy one. Just can't get through a, a little pomelo. <laughs> can't handle a pomelo in your life? Okay. We'll have the eight-year-old cheddar with the pomelo. That should be nice. A little finale to our cheese. And then I have another idea after this. If you'll stick with me in our little food test kitchen thing here. I'm sure this is the exact content you're hoping for when you subscribe. But I really enjoy doing this. Um, I've always been very interested in expanding my palate. Oh my god, it's so good! <laughs> oh my god, how did they... Mm. How does it happen? It's just like milk. It's just milk out the cow like any other milk. And then thyme, and I don't know what else. Wow. This time it was more like somehow they, they boosted each other up. The sharpness and the bitterness made each other seem all the more sharp and all the more bitter. But it's not bad. It's nowhere near as bad as when I tried to eat it at the same time as the egg. Oh my lord. 
By the way, the egg. I think I'm still a fan of it. I still enjoyed it while I was eating it. But after I ate it, for quite a while I kept burping and smelling the egg. And that was not very pleasant. That was the worst part of it by far. So in the long scale of it, I don't know if I'm a fan anymore. I'm not sure what I'll do with the remaining five. Trick my friends into eating them, maybe. Mmm. Oh man, I love old cheddar. Okay. Got another idea. We have some mango calpico, very sweet, very mild sweet flavor, <clears throat> it's called a non-carbonated soft drink. So we've got both water and sugar, modified milk ingredients, which gives it kind of a nice creaminess, and mango juice concentrate. So not really mango juice by any stretch, but a tasty treat. Of mango drink. I would highly recommend Calpico if you've never had it before. I don't want to splash all over my computer. Okay, so I've got about this much. I don't really have like a recipe here or anything. And I'm going to use my cheese knife, it appears, is what I'm doing, <laughs> which is fine. <laughs> Shouldn't really make a big deal. Um, and I'm just gonna plop some of the pomelo in my Calpis. My Calpico, sorry. Calpis is another brand, I think. <clears throat> yeah. That's what we're doing. Um, it's not really floating. Some of it is floating. I think depending on how large a chunk it is. It'll float or sink. Because even though it should have the same buoyancy, the larger it is, the more non juice there is. I think, I guess, right? Uh, surface area also has something to do with buoyancy. Yeah? Maybe? <laughs> Maybe, maybe. Get a little more, I guess. I want it to be like substantial. I don't want it to be just like nothing's happening. I could try blending this quick too. Because it's like, hmm, what should I do? I'll just try drinking some. Yeah, that's kind of nice. It's like a drink and chew sort of drink. The Calpico is so sweet, so smooth right off the bat, sweet and creamy and, and everything nice. And then kind of while that's still going through your mouth, you start biting into the more bitter juice, the pomelo. Maybe, maybe I'm onto something here. Hmm. Too lazy to get the blender. I don't think the hand blender fits in this. I'm gonna just try squishing. <clears throat> I don't know if this is working. <laughs> I'm just trying to squish it so it releases the juices early. But I don't even know if that's a good idea. Like maybe it's better to have it in phases. I'm not a culinary expert. This isn't Bon Appetit. This isn't It's Alive with whatever that guy's name is. We're just doing the best we can, okay? Oh, excuse me.
I don't know. I'm gonna try just drinking some of the, just the juice, just the Calpico, and see if it's affected the taste at all. I don't think it has. But the staged version of drinking and, and eating, that's all right. Oh, should I bother with the blender? No, I don't want to bother with the blender. I feel like I would just ultimately make something I don't like as much as this. Hmm. So, the pomelo, in retrospect, do I have any other ideas of what to combine it with? Only really bad ones. Only, like, obviously bad ones. Uh, yeah, so, jeez, I haven't really even put a dent in it, and I still have all this pomelo left, I don't know what to do with it, I don't know, I, I just go around asking if people want some pomelo, I, I gotta say, I'm not a huge fan, the, the flavor is just too, it's just kind of has too much bitterness for me to, it's like good at this, to have a bit of it, it's neat, but I don't want to eat a lot of it. Like, it just doesn't appeal to me to keep eating this. Hmm. I'm a little disappointed. I was hoping I would really, really like it. Um, given that I don't typically like grapefruit, I was like, ah, oh, maybe this will, like, help me gut the experience of grapefruit. Let's try it with a bit of sugar. That one's a good idea. And if I use the knife to cut it, then it'll have, like, kind of a, an exposed edge. Because most people eat grapefruit with sugar, so I think it's fine. Coke or which is your choice? Maybe, maybe this is the key. Maybe it was this obvious all along. Because people do this with grapefruit. And I still don't really like grapefruit when, when they do that. But I know that's like popular, so. Alright, so we've got one that I kind of cut out like a wedge. So it has like more of a exposed juicy part. That's pretty good. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I think that was the key. There's a little bit of sugar to take that edge off that bitter flavor. I mean, I'm not like in love with it now or anything, but it was definitely the best implementation. Well, some of the, uh, I really should have gotten a different knife. <laughs> It still tastes like cheese. That's so crazy. Just the residue from the cheese that I cut on this knife transferred over here and then transferred over here, and I can still, it still like overwhelms the palate. Well, I'm gonna go wipe this off quick at least. Oh, I wonder if this would be good with salt. Mm. Uh, what else do I have? I must have like cinnamon or something. Would that be good? Cinnamon. Jeez, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's... I don't know. This is pomelo, huh? This is the, one of the ancient citruses of the world. After all my years of drinking orange juice, putting lemon on things, I need to pay respects to the OG. The OG of citrus, the pomelo. Do I though? 
Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I would get it again. It's just so much. It was cheap though. I want to say this was only a couple bucks. So I'm not out a great deal. It was certainly worth a try. Um, yeah. I guess that's about it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think I can eat much more. It's like something just keeps building up and up and up and up. It's like not a super pl pleasant flavor for me. But uh, thank you, as always, for joining me on my little culinary adventure. Hopefully in San Francisco I can maybe pick up some cool stuff to eat <clears throat> when I get back home. And you will have to sit through that as well. All right. Bye-bye.